Welcome to Super Agents Live. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're new, welcome. You are going to love it. Hopefully, uh, I put a lot of work into this, so hopefully you get something out of it. Now, uh, and if you don't know what we do, you know, look, I talk with top producing real estate agents. And if you don't sell real estate, that's okay, because really this show is about entrepreneurship through the lens of an agent. If you're a plumber, pie maker, painter, uh, you can apply this stuff to your business. Now, this today's guest, this guy is uh, he's, he's a big, big trainer, and um, and you'll hear that. Now, this guy's a little bit hardcore, um, and I don't know, even with me and my personality, I'm not sure that I could work with this guy. Um, uh, but, um, you know, I like to bring uh, trainers and coaches on and say, hey, you know, what's the trick? What's your angle? Now, if you don't think, if you think this guy's abrasive, uh, which some of you might, some of you might go, hey, I love this guy. Um, uh, and I, I don't want to, you know, kind of like put you in any sort of like mood to, to reject or, or take this guy in. But here's the thing. Here is why I want you to listen to this all the way through. He outlines a strategy that I guarantee 99% of you will say, that makes sense. I can implement that and uh, and whatever. I've shared this. I personally shared the strategy with a few people, and they're like, "Oh my god, that's brilliant!" And I was just at a conference two weeks ago on the East Coast with a bunch of top producing agents, and one of them uh, said that they use this strategy. So uh, today's guest, his name is Rick Ruby. I hope you like it. Now, before we get to the com- content, the meat of it your, itself, I want to say a couple things. One, if you want to get more tips and tricks and strategies like the one outlined in this, you're going to want to do a few things. One, go to our website, superagentslive.com. I would love for you to download my free ebooks, 32 pages. It's entitled How to Sell. Uh, and uh, and you'll get my funnel. That way I can email you with, with new stuff. And I need to get way, way better at email. So number one, uh, download the book. And number two, the membership site is up and running. And I have, I don't know, in the free, there's a free, the, the paid versions are not even available yet, but the free version is. And uh, I have some, uh, some, some budgeting spreadsheets. I have some goal tracking spreadsheets. I have some lead tracking spreadsheets. Uh, it's all good stuff. So, um, so go do that. And always, of course, if you are doing 100 transactions, you want to get to 200 or 300, radio is the key. It's so radio is so crazy. So we're putting ra- agents on the radio. You have to have a team. You have to be a producer already. You know, we're looking for the top top one percent, and really like the top one half of one percent. Um, so uh, if 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 so, if you think you're a good fit, um, go do the getting started. There's a getting started page. Go through that. I'll call you. We'll chat. Okay, let's get to it. Hope you like it. <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. I'm really excited about today's guest. Now, all of you guys know that I, I've had the top minds of real estate come on the show and share their stories. Now, from you guys, I get emails all the time and you say, hey, Toby, go get a commercial person. Go get some mortgage people. Today, we have the second biggest trainer in the nation and he straddles both those worlds. So I am absolutely thrilled to introduce Rick Ruby. Hey, Rick, thanks for taking the time out today. Hi, how are you? I'm great, man. So listen, as I, I, as I said in our sort of pre-chat there, um, I, was, uh, I, I hadn't heard your name before, and somebody from the audience uh, reached out to me and said, hey, I should get you on the show. When I, when I pulled you up and, and uncovered your story, I was like, wow, this guy is perfect. So maybe take a minute, Rick, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then, and then what, what, you know, about your business and what you do. Cool. Well, I'm a 31-year mortgage man. I'm still in the mortgage business. I have uh, four branches, and I have 21 salespeople, and I close about 165 loans a month, which is about eight loans a month per loan officer, and the national average is about two and a half loans per month per loan officer. So I believe in having better quality people. I started coaching about 19 years ago with a guy named Joe Stump at a company called Borrow for a Lonely. 
I worked for him for six years, and I went off on my own 13 years ago, and I started coaching realtors and lenders on the art of a P&L, which is a profit and loss, and the skill set of building a team. Uh, I'm in the relationship business. I deal with people that know me and not a lot of people that hear about me. So I'm a guy that um, people know the best agent in their area pays me money. They come to one of my events. They sign up for coaching, and they hope we get taken. Now, just so let you know how we work, we have about 345 people that pay us 2500 a month. We have about 1,700 people that pay us $400 a month. I have 30 coaches. They're all in the business. My realtor coaches all do between 10 or um, between like 30 and 60 million, and we only coach people that do over 10 million. So I'm only for the higher quality realtor that is frustrated because he's filing a tax extension. He's frustrated because he doesn't have any money. And I teach people three things. I teach people how to earn. I teach people how to save. And I teach people how to share their money and be generous. So those are the three things I work on with my clients. Um, I believe in working small lists. Like I believe a realtor needs to work two lists of 50 people and you work those lists really hard and you take care of those people and those people each you send you one client a year, you end up with about a hundred transactions a year. I believe in one staff person for every three transactions a month. So if you close, you know, 30 deals a year, you're going to have one staff person, 60 deals a year, you're going to have two staff per people. So everything with me works off of a metrics. I kind of run a business uh, I try to stay out of it emotionally, and I try to keep it tactically is really what I focus on. Yeah, that's am- Look, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of amazing stuff in there. So, um, you know, if I uh, – first of all, um, the person that you worked with was Joe Stump. Why is that name so familiar to me? Joe Stump owned a, was the biggest training company. Me and Brian Buffini both started with him. He owned a company called Buy Referral Only. Oh, yeah. And he used to teach people how to work their database and how to build a referral business. And me and Brian both started with him. Brian was a realtor in San Diego, and I was a lender in Michigan. And we both started working for Joe. And what happened is Joe decided he wanted to go global, and he wanted to go on the Internet. Now you don't hear about him anymore, do you? <laughs> well, no, so he was the biggest and the baddest, and he outgrew himself. Well, look. I mean, I, I don't want to talk about Joe's story. I want to talk about yours. But, but help me understand. I don't. I, I'm not. Those two things are not correlating, right? So he he got on the internet, and normally, you know, that's you know a, a bigger market, more people, a more exposure. You no, know, but, but here's what happens. Okay. I grow at about. I've had about twenty eight to thirty four percent growth thirteen years in a row. Wow. Now, at the last event that I had, I had one hundred and forty five guests and three hundred members. My one hundred and forty five guests, one hundred and twelve signed up to pay me to be their coach. I swear to you, I took 35. Now, do you know anybody else that would turn away 70 people that wanted to pay them 2500 a month? Nobody would. Nobody now, what would have happened if I would have taken on more clients than I can handle? Well, well, uh, I would not have delivered a world-class experience, would I? No, no, you wouldn't. So every business has a sweet spot where you're taking great care of your clients and it's super profitable. What happens is people grow out of their sweet spot and then their operational staff or their support staff or their sales staff can't handle the growth and then all of a sudden the quality of the product goes down. Right. And in, in the real estate industry, the problem with the real estate industry is a bunch of knuckleheads are teaching them they need exposure. Like you said, it, you're a pretty famous real estate guy. You never heard of me. And I make a lot of money coaching realtors, don't I? You do. And, and, and right. That's amazing that I had not heard of you. Um, so, so I only coach a small group of people. I don't, I don't want to be a mass seminar guy that everybody knows of and is really peddling hope. I don't want to be one of those guys. So I'm looking at somebody's P&L every month. I'm looking at their personal budget every month. Hmm. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of accountability, not information. You know, like most of these guys are selling information. I'm selling accountability. That's interesting. Now, now you know, I'll tell you something. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say any names, but, but you know, I know how the world of coaching works. Uh, and, and look, this is how it's been explained to me from people on the inside. Like basically, uh, you know, if I want to be a coach, I, I go to a name. I pay them a fee. But it's three grand or whatever it is. I get certified by that coach. Then that coach will, will the big name coach, will give me clients. And, and the splits are right. horrendous. That's a crock. Let me tell you how it works. Okay. My students are in my program three years. They have to be in the top ten of my program. After three years of being in my program, then they go through a one-year training program. Then I give them students to coach, and I pay them a salary to coach me. Those are my clients. 
and they do everything that I say with those students. I coach my coaches on Wednesday, tell them what to say, and then they coach on Thursday. We follow an exact format. All my students are on call sheets. All my students fill out a lead tracker, a pay log, a P&L, and a personal budgeting. Most people that say they're in a coaching program are in a therapy program. Right. I'm in it. I'm like going, you ever worked out with a personal trainer? No, I haven't. Okay, that was what it would be like with me. So I'm going to tell you to do 50 push-ups, and you're going to do 50 push-ups. And I'm going to count them one at a time. That's what coaching looks like to me. I consider myself Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, Phil, Phil Jackson. I, I study those guys because they're great coaches. That's what I think of as coaching as like a sports team. Well, right. No, and, and it, here's, here's what the, the story I was saying earlier is, is you are very different. You're the outlier of coaches. Now, I'm, for the majority of the co- other coaches out there, you know, I've heard from these people on the inside, right? They will get co- clients from the big name top coach, but the splits are, from what I've heard, is people will pay $1,000 a month, 700 goes to the top name, and 300 goes to the person making the phone call. Now, the problem is that I've seen is the people making the phone calls with, with let's, say, let's say I signed up for coaching, is it's 30 minutes, man. And these people, like, the coaches literally watch the clock, and they're like, okay, guys, we're halfway through. And I'm like, that is not coaching. You know, I, I, well, I, here's what I do. I believe we coach off of a dashboard. So what a dashboard is is like when you drive a car, you're looking at your speedometer and your gas gauge, correct? Absolutely. So our dashboard is two things. It's about how much you make a month and how much you save a month. So what we do is I take your tax return. Like if you were to hire me right now, I would take your tax return. I would take your line 21 from your gross adjusted tax return, and I would add 20% to it and divide it by 12. That would be your dashboard. Every month you hit that, you're good. Every month you don't hit that, I'm going to load you up with homework. And then I'm going to have a savings dashboard, which is 20% of what you made. I believe you have to save 20% of what you make every month forever. And I make my students do that. So I'm not a therapist. I don't care about why you don't do what I say. Just do what I say. So that is our style. So our coaches are not doing whatever they want. They're following an exact outline of how to coach the students that month. So, so I'm not turning my students loose with just some big-name real And just so you know, I just interviewed two coaches from two big-name guys that you, both, that you mentioned, and I interviewed both their coaches, and both their coaches work 75 hours a week and have horrible businesses. But they do a lot of business right. off the Internet. Right. So it's just, I just, I'm a longtime fan of being in relationships and treating people with respect and working a small list of people. Well, no, so, Sorry, so well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how, you know, you said earlier you, you encourage people to have two lists of 50 and work. I mean, that is amazing. Look. And, well, here's how it works. Okay. Let's talk about it. Right. Let's talk about let's it. First it. of all, the most important people are your past clients. Yep. But you can't work all your past clients, can you? No. You ask any realtor that's on your show, he'll tell you how big his database, and you ask him what he does, and he don't do nothing. Maybe he sends a mailer every month. Right. So listen, I take the 50 favorite past clients. We call 12 of them every Thursday. We have a happy hour every single month with those people. Now, you're going to get business from if I called you every month, wouldn't I? Yeah. So these are people I'm in relationship with. Now, imagine you're not in real estate, but you're in, in the radio business. Okay. If I was a local realtor and I was your friend and I was having regular contact with you, could you send me one deal a year? Oh, I could for sure. Yeah. So that's 50 deals a year. Yeah. And then I make a list of your 50 favorite people in town, lawyers, financial planners, mortgage reps, title reps, and then you call them 12 a week and you work them a happy hour once a month, what would happen? Yeah, I mean, So I'm... there's four tactics, listen, that your members can make a lot of money. They call 12 of their 50 favorite people every Monday. They call 12 of their 50 favorite past clients every Thursday. They have two back-to-back happy hours every month, one for their 50 favorite past clients and one for their 50 favorite people. Now, I just gave them four tactics how to make money, correct? You did. You're... It cost them zero. Now, you know what's funny? If you have 40,000 people listening to this radio show, maybe 10 people will do what I just told you. That's true. Yeah. That, that because they don't have any accountability. But I don't need to come up with a bunch of new fancy stuff, do I? No. You, you, you... you know how long I've been working those two lists as a mortgage man? 30 <laughs> years. And I get all my business from them, 100 people. But I got people that send me 20, 30 deals a year. And I've known them for a long time. So I just believe in having relationships with less people, taking good care of them. But listen, I've been training loan reps for 18 years. You've never heard of me. No. 
And I don't, I don't, I'm not offended by that. I'm just, I don't want to be a big name. I want to be a really successful guy. But if I gave you, I'll tell you this, right now out of my 340 clients, you know how many I'm firing come December? Two. You know how many are quitting? Two. That's four people out of 340. What would you call that retention? Oh, that's amazing retention. That's, yeah, there's like, oh, zero, in metric terms, that's almost zero bounce. Right. I run, just so you know, at about a 92% retention rate of anybody that pays me 2500 a month for two years. I have a 94% retention rate, and I have about an 80% rate where they double their income in a two-year period. That's pretty unbelievable success rate. No, it, it is. It is. And I just, so, uh, there's a You couple. don't see me in any magazines ever. Right, right. You don't hear me ever on the radio. I don't advertise, and I don't do a lot of seminars. So, so okay, uh, 2500 bucks a month is, is, that's pretty, that's a lot of money. And you retain, yet you retain 94%. Now, you say, Rick, that you're an account. I don't take on any realtors that do less than $10 million. Okay. And I'm doubling their income over a two-year period. Is it a good return on investment? Absolutely. Whenever you can. And find- the other schmucks <laughs> that you mentioned are between five hundred and a thousand dollars a month. Yep. Now listen, I also guarantee my my results, or I refund half the money. And I've only refunded about five people in thirteen years. So somebody signs a contract with me. We look at their tax return. We say what their tax return will be in two years, and what their bank statement will be in two years. And if I don't hit it, I refund half the money. Think anybody else will put up their money? No, nobody would. That, that's, that's an amazing thing. You know, especially when you can say my track record is you put a dollar in and you get two dollars back, right? That's a cash machine that no wonder you've had people for well, it's more years. than that. Imagine if a $300,000 realtor makes 150 grand and he pays me 60 grand and in two years he makes 300. Right. It's right. a lot more than a two to one return. It's about a five to one return on their investment. Right. If a guy pays me 30 grand a year, I'll make him an extra 100 grand a year guaranteed. So, but. but He's going to get yelled at. Like, you can tell I'm kind of intense, aren't I? You, you are, man. I mean, you, you absolutely I'm are. I'm intense and fired up. What do you think it would be like talking to, to Nick Saban at Alabama? So, but, but Rick, but that's, that's what I'm at. That's what I'm trying to get to is, you know, in terms of accountability, you know, I mean, you, you know, I would have to, people would have to have a, I have a thick skin, man. And I'm, I'm walking lightly with you because I don't want to get yelled at, man. So, you know, you know why you have a thick skin? You want to make a lot of money. I knew that five minutes into I was talking to you. You're ambitious, aggressive. You want to make a lot of money. People who want to make a lot of money have thick skins. Right, yeah. People who want to get their feelings hurt don't make a lot of money, do they? They do not. So, if I, do you own your radio show? I do. If I was coaching you once a month, you'd make more money, wouldn't you? I don't, well, look, yeah, I mean, so we can talk about it offline what I'm doing, and maybe there's some way that you could no, but help. what I'm just saying is, if any, like, do you go to the gym? I do, yeah. yeah. How often? Um, I go about twice a week. I'm not, not I guarantee if you hired a personal trainer once a week, you'd be in better shape in three months than you are going by yourself twice a week. Yeah, 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 because, because I have a guy there waiting for me, right? I got to show up because he's there. got a guy waiting for you to show up, yelling at you when you're not doing enough exercise. It's kind of that. That's, what, that's kind of what I, when I designed this company, I wanted a personal training business for realtors and lenders where they're personally held accountable to give great results. That's what it, like, listen, I got to tell you, I've made a lot of money for a long time. I was a famous loan rep for a long time. I mean, I'm in every magazine. I've been a, a chart copper for a long time. I always made a lot of money. But the thing about the coaching business is helping other people make a lot of money. It just God, it just excites me these days. It's what it's about for me right now. So, but it's not about being famous. Yeah, no. Like, I, uh, I don't want to be famous. I want to make a difference. Like, if I had to boil my life down to one thing, it would be the movie Pay It Forward. That I make a difference so much in a few people's lives that they go make a difference in a few people's lives. I don't want to be famous. I have no interest. You, okay, right, right. And so look, so you can have a passion project, right? You've, you've made a lot of money. You've been a superstar. So when you get, you know, you, when you get to a certain level of success, right, here's, here's the saying. I'm sure you've heard it before, right? You do what you have to do until you get to do what you want to do. Now, you, that's where you are. Not everybody's there. How? But just so you know, hold on. I've loved every job I've had from being a laborer in a construction company to an insulation business to being a loan rep to being the owner to being a coach. I have loved every job that I've had, and I am grateful forever when somebody is willing to invest a dollar in me and pay me to do something. I take it. I never, ever take a dollar that anybody pays me for granted. And I think that's an attitude you don't see anymore in America. People have too much of a, of a notion of entitlement. 
Yeah, I don't know if it, yeah, I mean entitlement is one thing, but I you know, I think too many people, especially with real estate people, right? They they you know, they they see everybody as a prospect. And 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 when you look at everybody as a prospect, that is going to you're not going to be able to build a deep relationship with that person. I have talked with a lot of people, a lot of these coaches and and they they'll go, "Hey, this is the script." And I'm like, oh, "That script is so mechanical. You're never I've never used a script ever in my life. I've never taught a script ever in my life. I don't believe in scripts. I believe in you say something, I say something. We build a relationship we get to know each other we care about each other now i do believe in weaving like i do believe the next time i talk to you i'm going to bring up some of the things that you said to me this time i believe in weaving which is a sales technique to um you know i keep information on all my clients and then when i talk to them i talk about the things that we talked about last time i believe in that yes sure well look so here, let me ask you this question I, and this, this is going to be a tough question but, but this is really what i'm hearing from you right you know you're this hard hard accountability guy you're going to yell at me you know toby you know get, basically what you're going to tell me get out of your comfort zone because i will tell you hey look i want to hey rick i want all these goals right here's my pnl but i want to triple it next year but, toby no pain no gain <laughs> People pay me for pain so they can get a gain in life, don't they? I'm not a life coach. I'm not your therapist. I'm a business coach that makes people make more money. And if that's bad, don't hire me. If that's good, hire me. Have you always had this style? I mean, because, I, I mean, listen, so let me ask you two things. One, well, let's see. I got kicked out of high school in 12th grade, and I'm pretty smart. So why do you think I got kicked out of high school? Okay, yeah. If you can't be a conformist, be a leader. Isn't that really the options in life? Right. There you go. Yeah. People don't listen, say it. Listen, I way. want to do really well. I want to make a big difference. Every year I get more intense and more focused every year. So, so, so that's amazing, man. So how many I, – I would think this, right? So just hearing you for the last – we've been on the phone for 21 minutes. Um, it seems to me like you would have a 98% male clientele. I mean, I, I don't think women I can handle it. I with women. I have uh, uh, some of my best clients ever are women because uh, it's harder for men. Men have too much ego. The women are pretty surrendered. I require surrender, Toby. That's what I require <laughs> to be in my program. You have to surrender to be in my program. No egos. And I got some big guys. I got a guy, I'll give you a name and number. You want to interview a great realtor. This guy two years ago did $10 million. This year he's at $62 million year to date. He was, a, he was seven years a realtor doing $10 million, working 70 hours a week. Now he works 50 hours a week and does $10 million. Why do you think that is? Well, I, tell me that. I want you to tell me. What is the difference? I mean, that, that 10 to $62 million is amazing because that's not only a bunch of personal change, right? You, you, have, you have to – that's a different – He went from a one-person team to a 13-person team. He went from an all-internet business to a 40% internet business. He went from no P&L to a P&L every month. And now he watches his money, know what he's netting. He's netting about 44% of his gross revenue. Last year, he netted 33% of his gross revenue. He's starting to know his numbers, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, tracking Listen, is Listen, if you program. watch a TV show, The Profit, you ever seen that TV show? I have, man. I love that guy. I can't Dude, I love that show. I love Shark Tank. All those businesses are about knowing their numbers. When those TV shows came out, I got more committed to what I'm doing because it reaffirmed what I was doing. Accountability, people process. You know, I mean, it's just a, it reaffirmed a lot of things that I was doing watching Shark Tank and The Profit. I love both those shows. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so do you, so uh, again, I think the prophet, they, it, it, they aired like three or four episodes and they took it off, but you know, he w went in and he found if the, people aren't, don't know the show, he went in, this is a rich guy. He's a, he, he re-engineers companies, right? Somebody that's got all the components and he just re-engineers them. Now the one, the, they have to be able to generate revenue. He didn't go into companies that couldn't sell. You notice I don't coach broke realtors, do I? No, you tell I me. coach realtors that do over $10 million, and I only coach lenders that make over 250 on their W-2. I don't coach broke people because they're emotional. I coach people that are doing well, and they want to do better. You know, let me ask you a question, Rick. This is an interesting question to me. So if you look at – now, NAR came out with some stats recently, and, and it's this. Only 2%, 2 of, of agents make more than $200,000 a year. Now, right. that's amazing to me, number one. Number two, a million... Right, there's a million one realtors, so that's how many people? 22,000 could be in my program. 
So, 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 but here's, here's the correlation I want to make. So an, a, a mediocre, a mediocre uh, lender or right, mortgage broker, whatever, does better than the 98% of, of real estate agents. Why is well, that? Well, the reason that real estate agents don't make as much as lenders and none of the realtors that I coach make as much money as the lenders. Just so you know, I got one lender made $5 million year to date already as a lender. Net income taxable. He made two fifty three years ago when he hired me. Last year he made four million. This year he's going to make five million. I get unbelievable results, Toby, because I push really, really hard. But listen, the reason the realtors don't make as much as the lenders. Would you like to know the secret? I would. Lenders are on a W two. Realtors are on a ten ninety nine. Which one is more naturally surrendered? Yeah, the the person who gets a paycheck. The person on a W two. So they're surrendered to a process and a management program. Does that make sense? Yeah. The realtors are on 1099s. They have a hard time surrendering. They don't like bosses. You know why most realtors got into real estate, Toby? Freedom. Yeah. Well, I think there's I, no freedom and success, brother. Yeah. Well, you know, look, I I know where you're going. I will say two things, right? And I think we're we're thinking along the same lines. Most people get into real estate because they want two things. They want they want time freedom and they want financial freedom. The problem is they abuse the time freedom and they will never ever have the financial freedom. That's very true. And I honestly, I think that I'm a man of routine, and I think. Like I have high ADD and it means I don't like routine, but I've forced myself to overfocus and have a lot of routine. I mean, I'm very committed. Like just so you know, I talk to 130 people every week on the phone, me personally. You're one of 130 this week. Well, uh, listen, I am, I am very, I'm, I'm, honestly, man, I, I'm very honored because you do not know me, unfortunately. Uh, you and, called me. I don't know if you're uh, a, a spy for my competitor, but I don't care, do I? You don't know, and again, I pre- yeah, you don't know who I am, and I and and, and so anyhow, so I appreciate you doing this because my audience is going to get a lot out of it. Um, now, but look, here's help me understand, Rick. So this guy, ten million to sixty-two million. This other guy that went from whatever making sixty thousand, and last year he made no, he made two fifty. I don't take on. He made two fifty. He's a New Jersey lender, and this year he'll W two at five million. I, Do you know I, that I have right now out of my 340 guys, I got 85 that W2'd over a million last year. You won't find that many successful guys anywhere. I coach some of the baddest and brightest in the business, but the funny part is, Toby, they're not in any magazines and nobody knows about them because part of our program is flying below the radar. Well, you're not, I mean, but, but, but every year you get almost 30% growth. I mean, that's. I understand. From my current clients, bring me more clients. Got it. So I'll do, I do local shows for some of my clients, lenders. They'll bring realtors in the room. I get a lot of realtors refer me other realtors. Like I'll have 130 guests at my event in November in San Diego, and I'll have my 340 members. And out of the 130 guests, probably 70 were referred by other members. And we'll do a big presentation, and we'll bring all the members up that referred somebody up and gave them a gift. Well, 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 probably 70 of my 130 will have been referred to me. So, so then for, I have a sales force. I have lots of dialers. I have 10 dialers that work for me. And I believe in people that make phone calls. And they call and set up appointments. And they talk to some of my guys. And we find people that are looking for what we're doing. Yeah. I don't believe in cheap seminars. My seminars are $3,500 to come to my event. They're all meals included. They're all at four-star resorts. I'm already sold out in November. So even if people were to call me right now and say, hey, I want to come, they would literally not be able to come until next May because I'm already sold out. I'm always sold out. Every event I do is sold out. Always. That's and I always get more coaching students than I ever need. But listen, does that mean I'm still prospecting? Yeah, I think you always. are. Yeah. I am yeah. always prospecting. Listen, I teach three things. I teach people how to prospect. I teach people how to build teams. And I teach people how to count the money. It's always about those three things that I'm teaching. So, so let me ask you this. So first of all, man, uh, I'm in San Diego, so I, 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 uh, maybe I can get in with a press pass, okay? But um, number two... You know, here's what people say about my show. My show is so good, you know, in terms of the stuff I get. I mean, just, just look at this episode, right? Um, you know, people, people keep, when they find me, they keep it secret. They're, and people have told me, hey, hey, man, I've kept a secret because I don't want people knowing, like, about this, right? Because it's free. I don't, I don't charge for any of this stuff. I, this stuff I do for free. I mean, the, uh, it's amazing to me, like, if you take, again, this 250 to 5 million, it seems like that guy go, man, I don't want to share Rick. He's way too good of a, of a resource for I know, me. but here's what you have to remember. My style of doing business is relationship-based, Toby. So if me and you are both realtors in San Diego, we're not fighting for the same client. Guy likes you or he likes me. We're different people with different styles. 
Yeah. Okay. So when you're in the relationship business, it's not about secrets. There's no, I don't have any marketing secrets. I just call people and I build relationships with people that like me and I tell them I want to be their realtor and they send me their friends if, they, if I stay in touch. But if I don't stay in touch, what's going to happen? You know, it's funny. A guy sells a house and he went to some stupid uh, seminar and he tells the client, I love referrals. And then he never talks to the client again. Right. Yeah. Or he went to some other stupid seminar and he's got some sticker on his business card uh, you know, whatever it is, but it's ridiculous. They don't, they don't have a relationship-based business. They, do, they treat it like a transaction. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, man, I, uh, Rick, uh, sorry, I, I feel so comfortable with you. I'm, I'm talking maybe being too uh, – anyhow, so, so I, I bought my house that I live in right now. I bought an 04. I paid a million bucks for it. I, okay. I, I found my – the guy that I used to do this, I, I found him. actually was selling a, my wife's used BMW. He came. He said, oh, I'm a realtor. I said, hey, let me – you know, I'm buying a house. And he, he was kind of lazy. He gave me – at that time, you, I could get a Sandy Core pass because I, I don't sell real estate. I'm more of an investor. The bottom right. line is I said – he gave you a referral fee, a discount off doing the real estate. No, right? no, no, no. He didn't give me anything. I just said, hey, this is the house. Write the offer. It's a long story. I won't get into oh. it. But I found it. I said, write it. So you bought a million-dollar house in 04, so that was 10 years ago, right? Yep. And, How and much contact you get with that realtor? Zero. And the, here's my point. Here's what I'm getting at. Is since then, I bought 17 more houses. And you know what? He didn't get one of them. Only because he didn't stay in touch, did he? He didn't, he didn't do anything. He, anything. Treated you, he treated you like a paycheck. Yep. Instead of a human being that he could have got to know, hang out with you, followed up, been in contact once a month, done some business back and forth, and he would have got 17 deals from you. Plus, how many people do you know in San Diego that have bought a house in the last 10 years? 20 more? Oh, uh, I, I hang out with really, really successful. A, a so lot more. Hopefully all your members listen to this story, because this is the truth of how all real estate is done. People don't treat people like people. They treat them like transactions. I agree, but so here, so let me ask you this. So again, your you, two lists of fifty people. Now, here's so let's you, say let's say he would have put you on his fifty favorite past client list because you're a successful guy and you're influential. That would put you on the list, wouldn't it? Yeah, should. And he would have called you once a month. Every Thursday he calls twelve. So once a month he would have called you and he would have invited you to a happy hour once a month for you to come to a happy hour. Sometimes you go, sometimes you don't. If you'd have never ever done anything with him, you'd have still referred him and used it again just because he stayed in contact. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and again, when I say I bought 17 houses, right, I, all, I then sold them. So I, I personally did 17 sides. And then there were another 17 sides for him if, if I would have had him list them. You know, not so to- imagine how much business this guy lost because he didn't treat you with respect and stay in touch. Because basically, did he treat you with respect? No. Again, he, yeah, so, I was just listen, a guy. If I shake your hand and say, I'm going to be your realtor for life, and then I never contact you again, basically I spit in your face, didn't I? Yeah, you, you're, you lied to me, you betrayed me, you, you know. And you, you get offended, don't you? Yeah, I, a little but bit. But you notice, the basis of all trainers in the real estate lending business, if you took the top ten guys that are trainers, okay, they all are going to say the same thing, stay in contact with your past clients. Every trainer is going to say that, right? They, they, yeah, they are. But listen, is sending you a mailer twice a year going to – is that really staying in contact? Is that building a relationship? So listen, I, I do a mailer to the big masses. I do a video to the masses, and then I call these small lists of people, and I want to be in relationship with these people that I have hand-selected to be in relationship with. That's my model. And listen, and, and here's the deal. When you send I – mean, I'm, and I'm just saying the same thing. Right? I'm, I'm supporting what you said. When you send a mailer, that's just as bad as, as hiding behind social media, right? You're, it's a, the, well, I know, but it's better than nothing. Oh, I agree. I, I, I agree. It, you know, it's, but listen, some contact is better than no contact. You know, if you mailed a letter every month and you were buying a house, who is that doggone realtor that keeps mailing us every month? You would read it. Right. You get mailers to your subdivision. Farming works. I got realtors that farm my house. I live in a real fancy house. So I got a lot of realtors that farm me, and I, I, I recognize their name by their mailing that comes to my house. My wife is always pointing out what other neighborhood houses are selling for. So mailing and farming definitely works. I'm not against doing that, but I'm not into that being the only thing we do. I agree. Here, 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 look, let me ask you this, Rick, because, because people know this, right? As you said, every trainer will say, hey, keep in touch, right? So the problem is, is people will go, oh, I know I need to call you know, 12 people on Monday, 12 people on Thursday. Uh, but they know, they also know, I need to provide value to these people. Now, and then pe- that's no, what- you don't. No, you don't. Okay. A relationship is not about value. What's a relationship about, Toby? I guess it's about contact. That's right. Listen, me and you are two guys trying to make a living, trying to be really good at what we do, right? Uh-huh. Yep. 
They will either be a draw between us or there won't be a draw between us. It'll be up to either of us or both of us to continue the relationship, right? Yeah. Now, you sound younger than me. I'm 53. How old are you? 44. So you're probably going to chase me more than I would chase you. Now, if I really thought the radio was something that I wanted to be involved in, I would, of course, chase you, wouldn't I? Yep. So I think that... I, well, I think it's natural sometimes for younger people to gravitate towards older people. I think you're finding a lot of the people are looking for wisdom, and wisdom comes with age. Yeah. Like, I've done things wrong that you probably haven't done yet that you might do wrong. Yep. So if you had somebody like me that's a little older and wiser and a little more experienced, so a lot of times a little older people brings a little more wisdom to the table. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. I mean, it, it seems it, like the world is getting back to chasing a little wisdom. Yeah, I think it's wisdom. And look, you know, it's battle scars, right? It's, it's you have to fall down. You have to try to jump that fence to go, oh, I know what that looks like. I know what that feels like. And th- here's the so, yeah, I would agree with you. You know, the... so I think it's I think that, you know, you, you like, listen, for my business, I have 50,000 people that have seen me at a seminar. OK, so I have dialers that call them and send them videos. There's uh, a million realtors and 400,000 loan reps. I send them all a video every month. But you know how much response I get from that stuff? Like next to nothing. Hmm. My best business is my 340 people bringing me one or two names that we can follow up on that they think should be coached. So every event, my whole group gives me one or two names of people that they think we should contact that would be good coaching candidates. And that's where we get most of our business. But do I market to every? Do I send a video to every realtor and lender? Yes. Am I glad I'm getting on your radio show? Yes. It can't hurt me, can it? Absolutely not. No way. But it's surely not going to change my life. So listen, you have to have a broad business plan that has four or five points to it. Okay. But at the top of the pyramid has to be the best relationships that you're doing with the net those hundred people, isn't it? Yep. Absolutely. So, like you probably have eight or ten go-to guys that have been the best on your radio show so far, right? Uh, you know what? Yeah. I mean, and I'll tell you the people that I absolutely love, like that, that, you know, they, that go crazy on Twitter, you know, it's, it's probably less than it's, it's maybe five out of 140 interviews. I, I can tell you that when I talk to about 50 people, I really enjoy probably five of them. Yeah. Now I would do business with probably 30 of the 50. I wouldn't do business with all 50 because they don't align with my values, but 30 of 50 people that I meet, I would want to do business with five of the 30. I would want to have a relationship with where we socialize, we hang out. I talk to them. They talk to me. I stay in contact. I mean, that's just, to me, that's like a natural evolution of human beings. So, so real quick, Rick, tell me, tell us, um, so, you know, you said, you know, five, you should have five pillars, right? With the top pillar, the top piece of that being relationships. What are those other 250 lists? Okay. So So I'll give you my five pillars. Okay. Okay. So number one, we have 50 favorite past clients. That's the most important list. The number two list is 50 favorite local people. Hmm. People that you're doing business with that you can grow your business and them growing their business. Does that make sense? It does. Number three would be a 400-person past client database. Okay. Number four would be a whale list of 10 rich people in the town that you would like to get to know. Mm, I love that one. That's one of my favorites. I chase a lot of whales. You chased me. You must have thought I was a whale. Maybe you think I'm more of a whale now than you did earlier. I don't know. I do. But you chase whales, right? I do. So I think I'm a whale in the training business. I think I'm a whale in life. I make lots of money. I live in a nice house. I got lots of money in the bank. I got lots of employees. I got 160 employees. So to me, that makes me qualify for a whale. I would want to get to know me locally and nationally because those kind of people are very influential. So chasing the 10 whale list. And the last thing that I chase is some type of advertising and internet market. I personally use videos. I send a lot of email videos out. It's cheap. doesn't cost anything. So I use video emailing. But I get a very small response. Like last month, I sent out a million videos. 21,000 were opened, and it worked out to six clients. Oh, I'm sorry. Pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Well, hold on. Uh, uh, look, I might be able to help you with that. Um, are you familiar? Uh, we, I don't want to get into it here. I can, we can do it offline if you're interested. But are you familiar with a guy named Jeff Walker? Nope. Okay. Uh, I might be able to help you increase those conversions because what was the number? How many did you send out? I sent out a million. Wow. I had 21,000 opened. Wow. Because, you know, a lot of them go to spam or they don't know yep. who I am, so they just delete it. And it worked out to about six clients last month. Got it. 
Well, if you're into, I have a book recommendation if you want. That uh, really quickly, it's a, it's a, this guy's. They call him the four hundred million dollar man, but his name is Jeff Walker, and he's created this thing called the Product Launch Formula. And it's, and he's taken what basically what he does, Rick, is he's taken the the typical, the old school sales letter. And that goes top to bottom, and he's broken it up. That and he, and he calls it a sideways sales letter, and he does it with video. And he, it's again, I don't. Want, we can talk about it later if you want. I'm happy to share. But uh, I well, listen, I'm always open to getting new techniques to help my business. Yeah. One thing about me, if you want to be a great leader, Toby, you got to be a great follower. I'm always hiring people to consult to my company. I'm always hiring people that can coach me. Uh, I'm always hiring people that. Internet people, computer people that can help me always. You have to be open that you don't know it all. Yeah. Like I know a lot about a few things, but I don't know a lot about a lot of things. So I would definitely like his name and number, and I will definitely call him and pursue him and see if he can help me in that area. But listen, as long as your base is strong, everything else will follow, won't it? Yeah. I have a strong foundation, Toby. Would you agree? One hundred percent. I have 340 clients pay me 2,500. I have 1,800 clients that pay me 400 a month. I have a strong foundation of 1,800 people. I have 50,000 people that have seen me on stage at one time or another. That's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot, yeah. So I work the million four of all the lenders and realtors. I work the 50,000 that have seen me. I work the 1,800 that are in my small program. I work the 340 that are in my big program. It's the same triangle, isn't it? Just like I would teach somebody else to work. Right, right. Okay, I am understand. I'm getting a little bit better picture of, how, of what your funnel looks like for sure. But my foundation is the people, the 340 that know me and care about me, they're my foundation. Now, let me ask a question. These guys are all top achievers in their towns, right? Yep. Can they get me one client in a year? Uh, they... they they sh- I, absolutely, 100%. So I could double my client base just taking care of those 340, can I? Yep. So, I mean, all that other stuff, you have to do it in business to have balance, but the real key is the foundation of your business. Like when I look at anybody's business, where does the majority of the business come from? Where does the majority of the revenue come from? It's your sphere. And it always comes from a small group of sphere of people that care about you. Yep. I agree. L- let me let me switch gears a little bit. I, and this is this is this question that I'm going to ask you is is purely personal. It's purely like I'm going to ask you for some free coaching, right? Get or get your free, your 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 advice. And now, so I do this show for free, and I and it's basically to build my platform. And again, we have a big footprint, in 57 countries. Well, you must sell something else. You must charge people to be on the show. You're either. Like you're either going to try and get me to pay you to be on your show, you're either charging people to be on your show, or you're charging people to advertise on your show. Neither one of those. Um, so okay, then how do you make money from this radio show? Right, and, and, and let me say, so we've been doing this show for a year, and I have made fundamentally no money. People reach out, and they'll ask me to you know, the, they'll pay me to advertise, and sometimes I'll do it, sometimes I won't. But that's not my deal. Here's, here's why I built this platform, and here's why I've really gotten out there and known all the top, top people in, in uh, the real estate world. It's this. I'm putting people the, – the, the one silver bullet that I see, and I, I, again, I've had 140 interviews, is people doing uh, – I'm sure you know Boomtown. So the, it's the, here's the model. Boom- Boomtown is an advertising program for realtors that people pay a ridiculous amount of money and they have a ridiculously small conversion from. Um, so, oh, Boomtown, it's ridiculous. So it's Boomtown – well, well. so look. But again, here's the model. So Boomtown for buyers leads. And then it's radio. It's actually getting on the radio and doing radio, right? Being on your terrestrial, getting in your car, being on, doing those ads. So, so that's what I'm doing. I'm building this platform so that I can get top. Okay, so I have a realtor in Orlando, Florida named Cleve Loveland. Had a weekly radio show for 10 years. Uh, he can't break through and be a top producer. I got another lender in Tennessee. Had a radio show with realtors for eight years. She can't break through and be a top player. Why? Too much exposure and not enough relationship. Well, and that, that, well, look, so, so I'm telling you, yeah. you're doing your radio show all wrong. So now listen, a good friend of mine is a famous travel blogger. He's the most famous, most followed blogger in the world. Ask me if he makes any money doing it. He should. It's zero. Then what good is it? What good is a business that don't make revenue and don't make profits? It's no good. I don't believe in build it and it will come. I believe in figure out how to get paid from the radio show today. Call me, book some time with me, pay me some money. I'll teach you how to get paid from your radio show. Because if you can't get paid from your radio show, it's a waste of time. 
I, well, I, right? <laughs> yes, I would agree. I would agree with that last comment. Now, you I, said you wanted some coaching, right? Well, no, no, no. Hold on. But here's here's the question I was going to ask you, right? So, so one of the things that I here's my, here's one of the visions, right? So I I am I'm I am currently putting people on the radio, and and that is that is making me money, right? When I say again, radio doing radio commercials. Now, if the people Cleve Loveland and this other guy, just like you and your one million videos, you're having terrible conversions, I would say that boils down to bad copy. Now, now I don't know. You could totally disagree with me or whatever. So I would think that if Cleve did it the right way and had some science behind what he did, he could make it a success. So, but here's... Well, he's had a radio for 10 years and he does about $15 million a year off the radio. I mean, he does pretty good, but he's not going to be a top guy with the radio show. So here's what happens. When you have a mass lead generating system, you ignore your relationships. That's that, just yep. natural. I agree. People get into a mat like Boomtown. Like, I love Boomtown. If it's used as a fourth or fifth pillar. But what happens is all of a sudden, Boomtown is their whole business. And you look at all these mega agents all over the country that have an internet-based business, and they're paying all these buyer agents to convert all these leads. They don't make any money. Yep. Like when you look at their tax return, you look at their line 21, they don't make any money. So listen, I think that those are great tools to add to a strong foundation. But they can't be the primary foundation. I, again, I, I agree. You know, everything goes back to relationships. I would 100% agree with you there. But, but, but you need something to go and bring those people into your funnel to then build those, those, those relationships. The problem is, as we both know, people get lazy. When you get, start to get come list me leads from the radio or, you, you know, or Boomtown leads, you know, you, you, that's, that's, that's what you start doing. You for, and you neglect taking those relationships one step deeper. Now, here's, here's the question I really want. And we're get, we have to start wrapping up. And I appreciate the time you spent with me, Rick. But here's the question I have for you. <clears throat> And this is where I was going to say this is where you can help me. You have three. I mean, how many people make more than a million dollars that you work with between that three, four, five, 85, 85 people. Now, now, at the end of the day, right, 85 people net more than one million. If you look at their top line of business in terms of total business, I would say that may be in the billions. What do you mean? In the so, so if so, you're like uh, so your guy that does sixty two million top line, right? Ten million to sixty two yeah. million, right? If you have ten, I know, of those, but he'll only net on that sixty two million. He'll net about seven forty. Okay. But, but again, I'm just I'm, I'm just saying top line numbers. I'm, here's what okay. I want to do. I want to create a, a group of one hundred and fifty people all doing. Uh, uh, a hundred million dollars in volume. Now, hopefully, hopefully they're building their business right. And if they do a hundred million in volume, they're going to put four million in their pocket. Whether that happens or doesn't happen, I don't know. But I'm saying, so. But if you again, you put all those people, all of a sudden now, my group. So first of all, let me help you okay. from a real from a realtor coach. They do a hundred million at three percent. They make three million dollars. They net about twenty five percent. They would net about nine hundred on a on a hundred million dollar business. I've coached four hundred million dollar agents. Not one of them netted a million dollars. What, something's crazy, wrong. isn't it? Yeah, that is crazy because you know. No, I'm just telling you yeah. that industry doesn't look at the P and L. Where do? Why am I so popular? I spend all my time in the P and L. You go to get ten realtors and have them send you their P and L. They don't have one, or they have something done by their accountant. Yeah. You have to do an internal P and L every month to run a business. This radio show has to have a P and L. Here's the airtime. Here's the staff. Here's the cost. Over here on the right is the revenue. The revenue has to be more than the expenses. Like you're coming up with some big hook. I keep waiting for you to hear the big hook. Oh, no, no, it's just it's it, right. Well, you keep stopping me, so let me get to it. So here's my point. My point is, you have this group of very, very successful people. Now, in my mind, you know, you you're hel- you're you're helping them manage their business. I w- if I was in your shoes, I would say, hey, listen, let me help you manage your media career because with that group of people, if if at least the way I work, and I know you don't want to be famous, but you know, I would be, I would you have the power to do TV deals. You have the power to do book deals. Right. So I think in media terms, you know, why have you not why have you not thought about taking these people and, and enhancing their media careers? Well, what do you think happens to them? You ever watch TV, ever watch reality TV show? What happens to all them famous people? Right. Well, some people for sure implode. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree with that. So listen, make a lot of money, fly under the radar, work hard every day. We're, I'm, a, I'm a Bible thumping right wing Christian <laughs> Republican. I'm not. I'm not about being famous. I'm about flying under the radar, doing a really good job, taking really good care of my clients, leaving my children's children in inheritance, going to work every day. I, I get scared sometimes with the fame I have, Toby. I'll tell you, man. I, you know, Rick, you are. You, I, I, I thank you for coming on the show. You have an unbelievable personality. You remind me a lot of uh, somebody I had on the show, a guy named Grant Cardone. I don't know if you know Grant. Um, nope. But, uh, but uh, you know, uh, when I heard your name, Rick Ruby, 
I was like, why does that sound familiar? Why does that sound familiar? And there's a character on The Fifth Element, Ruby Rod, that Chris Tucker plays. You know, very over-the-top uh, character in that film. Have you, uh, do, do you know who I'm talking about? No, I did not see that. <laughs> Amazing. Anyhow, here's, here's, I'm going to ask you two questions and we're going to wrap up. First is, and this should be an easy one for you, I, I'm an aspiring agent or I'm an aspiring agent. Um, I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Go buy the movie, pay it forward. Got it. Oh, man. That's, that's... Start changing people's lives one person at a time. I love it. And by the way, man. The $8 cost. I don't really read books. I don't really endorse many books. I like, uh, the only books I like are Who, Who Moved My Cheese, the book Raving Fans. I like the book Mr. Schmills. I like the book The World's Greatest Sales. There are only four books I recommend. Probably the only four books I've ever read. Amazing. Well, anybody in the audience, if you haven't read any of those books, and all the stuff is going to be on the links on the show notes, uh, but you can get a free copy using our link, audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. Now, here's what I want to know about you. I mean, you're this very high energy guy. You remind me very much of like a Tony Robbins, but with a, with a different angle. You know, do you have a personal habit, Rick, that you think has, has contributed to your success? Yeah, I've had 10 coaches. You have ten, I don't, uh, oh, get 10 coaches in your life to coach well, you. I've had 10 different coaches in my life over the last 30 years. Got it. I'm very coachable. That's amazing. I always am looking for a new coach. I just interviewed Tony Robbins. I just interviewed Jeffrey Gittimer. I interview coaches. Jeffrey Gittimer is a famous author. Tony Robbins is a famous motivational speaker. Neither one were the right coach for me. But I'm looking for a new business coach right now that I will pay money to to guide me to the next areas where I am weak. I'm always hiring consultants. I'm always hiring outsiders to tell me what I'm doing. I bring in leadership trainers for my team. I bring in a lot of outside coaches. I don't, I don't think I know anything, Toby, so I always have to be learning. Do you know, do you know, have you, uh, do you know who Jay Abraham is? Yeah, I met Jay Abraham years ago. He was part of uh, Joe Stump's program. He was one of Joe's guys. Got famous it. marketing guy, one yep. of the best marketers ever in the planet. Yep, absolutely. Very famous guy. So, so um, well, I, again, I, I, you know, it just seems to me like where you're at in your life, it seems like a Jay might. Tony's not the right guy for you. Jay's big marketing and big exposure guy. Yeah. It's not, I don't, I don't dislike you. his platform. Like, I think he's, like, I've, I, when I ever thought about going more mass marketing, I thought about going to Jay Abraham's. I have met him several times and knew him, you know, 18 years ago. So, I mean, he's very famous and very good at what he does, and he writes copy better than everybody else, and he does print, and he, he builds brands better than anybody I've ever seen. Bill Kennedy, uh, Jay Abrams, those are the best brand builders. I 100% will agree with you. Hey, Rick. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I would love to. I mean, your energy is that you're a, guys like you. I have a hard time keeping up with because, you know, I don't know where you're going to go next, but I appreciate coming on. I hope you would maybe stay open to, to you coming on again in the future. But um, everybody in my show, you know, I, I, I encourage them to reach out, say thank you. For, cause I, look, you're, t- you're a rich guy. You make a ton of money. You spending this 51 minutes with me probably cost you three grand at minimum. So, it cost me nothing. I told you you were the last call of my day. <laughs> well, look, so you stopped me from smoking a cigar 40 minutes sooner than I would have. Uh, well, tell us where we can find you and people can reach out and say thanks. Uh, I don't have any, I don't have email. I don't believe in doing email or texting. Uh, my team has a website, www.thecoretraining.com. They can go to my website and talk to a salesperson. They can check us out. So it's the core training.com. Everybody that probably would be the only way to get a hold of them. Uh, they probably couldn't get hold of me. Uh, they would have to know somebody to get hold of me or they'd have to get through my gatekeeper cat. But I, uh, 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 honestly, I'm getting about 10 or 15 thank you cards a week, so I must be helping a lot of people. You are, man. And, I, I, you know, a guy like you, you, sh- you should. Listen, I appreciated you calling me. That's what it's about. It's about reaching out and finding people that can help you grow. And if you felt I helped your show, I'm glad I could help you. You absolutely did. I just, I, you know, I think just, I, 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 you know, and I, I, don't, I know we got to quit, but, you know, a guy like you shouldn't stay in the dark, man. I know you want to fly under the radar, but you know what? You know, Listen, I want to pay it forward, brother, a couple people at a time. If I've helped you, that's good enough for me. Right. You'll go help somebody else. I mean, I Honestly, I think too many people are caught up in being famous. Hey, Rick. I'm not going to write a lot of books. I'm not going to do that. Got it. Rick, thank you so much for coming on the show. Cool, man. I appreciate you calling me. See you, Toby. Good luck. Later, bud. Bye. Let's go. 